ladles and jelly spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today we have a little bit of a special treat, we're going to be uh, dismantling something moderately impressive. But uh, before we do, I wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, electrical safety. Now, obviously before you dismantle anything, you need to switch it off and unplug it from the wall, that's a given. But what you also need to do is make sure you leave it for a few minutes to give the capacitors a chance to discharge. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, a capacitor is a little gadget you find on a lot of circuit boards that is designed to control power. It basically works like a, a small battery. And what it does is power comes into the circuit from the mains or from a battery or from wherever. And sometimes that power supply may not be very clean. It might, it might spike up and down. Um, there could be all sorts of issues with it, and electronics don't like things like that. Uh, so what a capacitor does is it basically acts like a small battery, and it charges up with the power that's coming into the device, and then it, re it produces a clean, constant power supply to the components of the device. Now, because it works like a battery, it does store a charge. So when you unplug a device, there might still be residual charge in the capacitors. And I, I've got this, I want to show you what I mean. This is the power supply for my son's laptop. Now, if we look at this on the back here, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says there, it's, the input is 100 to 240 volts, 2.5 amps. Now the output, 19 and a half volts, 6.7 amps. So there's a lot of power coming out of this. Now watch what happens when I plug it in. So, if I just plug this in, now you see here, this has started to glow to let you know that it's powered, which is a, a very nice little feature, I like that. So obviously when it's plugged into the laptop, you can see at a glance whether or not it's plugged into the mains or not. Now, watch what happens when I unplug it from the mains. So that's now unplugged completely. That blue light is still on. And that's because the capacitors in here are still holding a charge. Now, if we were to take this apart now, there's a very good chance that not only could we short circuit it and damage the components of the board, more importantly, we could give ourselves a very, very nasty electric shock. So, whenever you dismantle anything electrical, not only do you need to switch it off and unplug it, but give it some time for the capacitors to discharge because you can see here this is still lit up it's it's fading but it's still lit up and that's what a minute or so and there now you see there's still a very faint blue glow in there I think that's gone out now but that's what I mean you have to be very very careful anyway I just wanted to mention that before we start what we're doing today so, what are we going to look at today? Well, we have a very special treat today. We are going to look at this. Now, this is a professional grade smoke machine. Actually, it's a fog machine. Um, it's a lovely bit of kit. It's made by a cam, and it's, this is called an atmosphere. Uh, the part number, the model number, is a KHM800V2 haze machine. Uh, it's a cracking bit of kit. This was given to me by a very good friend in order for us to talk about it. And uh, basically what I wanted to do was uh, tell you a few, a little bit about this machine, how it works, and I think we'll actually take it apart and uh, have a look inside it. But first I wanted to talk about the differences between the kind of smoke machines you've seen me make in the past and a, a professional machine like this. So this is the back of the machine, obviously. So there's a few things to note here. Firstly, we've got this big door on the back, and that's where you put the smoke fluid bottle. I've <laughs> just wrapped that to stop it leaking. Uh, it also has a remote control, which goes in this handy little compartment here, and that plugs in here. And this is very useful. Uh, it's, um, it actually has a fridge magnet on the back so that it will stick to things, which is quite handy. Um, but this allows you to control the machine manually. So we've got uh, various functions on here. You've got uh, manual, which is a momentary switch. You push it and the machine will produce smoke for as long as you hold the button down. Then you've got continuous, which is a toggle switch. Press that, it will make smoke until you switch it off. 
And the last button also a toggle switch is timer on and off. So if you turn the timer on, then it will start using these three uh, controls here. So we've got one dial for interval, how often it will puff smoke. Uh, the duration of the, the operation, so you can have it run for a couple of seconds or a minute or two or whatever. And then finally output, so that controls how much smoke the machine will actually produce when it's running. Uh, and that just plugs into there, that's very useful. I'll just put that to one side for a minute. Now, the other features on here, oh, I should say, the reason this door's been bent at the top corner is so that we can get the hose out, so that we can actually lengthen the hose and put it into a 25 litre uh, container of smoke fluid because that one hold the, the container that goes in there holds about a litre and it doesn't last very long. Um, now more importantly uh, on here we've got the manual controls here so you can program the thing without the remote but we've also got here DMX in and DMX out. Now these sockets are to connect this smoke machine to a computerized control system, a show control and that means that you can plug it in somewhere um, on your set, on your stage or wherever and actually control it remotely using a computer. Um, so you can run it say for, so it will go off on a timer or you can run it to a laser trip wire or whatever so that you can control how the machine operates. It's very very useful. Now if we just turn it round a bit and we look at the front and the side. Now on the front this is where the smoke comes out. So what we've got here it's a little flap with a thumb screw and that controls the angle that the smoke will come out at. Uh, inside here, I don't even see, let me turn it around a little bit more. Inside there is a squirrel cage fan and a nozzle. Now this nozzle is where the smoke comes out and the squirrel cage fan basically draws air in through the side of the machine and blows it out here and so that blows the smoke out. So in its basic operation it works the same as the machines I've demonstrated to you before. Uh, this, the heating element in here takes the fluid in, heats it up, turns it to smoke, it comes out through this nozzle and the air from the fan pushes it out of the machine. So it's a very simple little thing. So I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take it apart and we'll see how it works. It's got a handle on the top here, it's also framed to hang it on the wall. So we'll just undo that, again it's just thumb screws. spacer so we'll make sure we don't lose those so that's the um, the handle that goes on the top uh, and obviously it's got holes in it so you can you know bolt it to the ceiling or bolt it to a wall or whatever so I think we'll start with this side because this side looks like it's meant to come off I'll take this thumb screw out of here as well. Oh, I'm trying not to drop it on the floor. Now this is one of the interesting things when you're working with any kind of smoke machine is you can see this fluid inside um, and the trouble is with smoke fluid is it, it doesn't dry, it never evaporates. So every time you work with anything like this you are going to get covered in it. So uh, Always have plenty of uh, cloth or kitchen roll to hand to try and clean up some of the goo. Just wipe the worst of it off because, as I say, it will never, never dry. So let's put that to one side and we can have a little look inside. So I'll just turn this around a little bit. And hopefully you can see. So what we have here, there's the squirrel cage fan. So the way that works is this part here spins. And what it does is it sucks air in through the middle and pushes it out through the outlet here. So that pushes out and it blows the smoke out. So this is the heating element here, so this is where the, the magic happens as it were. So I'm going to need to um, break this connection here. I'm slightly dubious about doing this because 
what I don't want it to do is, is to disturb it and then have it leak. But unfortunately, without taking that connector apart, we'll never get the pipe out. Also, I need to be very careful with these because they're brass. And if you overdo it, they'll crack or strip. But that's where the smoke actually comes out. So this, oh, this looks nicely. This looks nicely uh, <laughs> cross-threaded. This screw here. That looks rather ominous. Okay, that's that one. Let's flip this back over. Get this one here. There seems to be some kind of thermal lagging around it to uh, protect it. Let's see. Oh yeah, see it's, there's a lot of insulating material in here. So obviously to keep the heat away from the rest of the machine I have to be very careful how I take this apart otherwise it's never going to go back together again that is very very hot even I mean this machine's been off for at least half an hour now and that is still too hot to touch so I have to be very careful here I'm not burning my fingers Yeah, see, this is the uh, the awkward bit. Is going to be getting that nozzle out. Yeah, don't think we're going to get this apart without damaging it. But basically, um, we might have to just do it like this. You can see inside there. There's this big block of aluminium, and. Uh, that will have a, a machined chamber inside it and uh, so basically these two wires here come from the circuit board and they heat up that block and get it very 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 hot and then the fluid comes in through this metal pipe here gets pushed in by the pump and when it hits the hot aluminium it turns to smoke it you know basically vaporizes turns to smoke and it wants to get out bands as it gets hot the only way it can come out is through the outlet pipe here so i think now that's still radiating a lot of heat um, so i mean obviously this is the main difference between a commercial smoke generator and, and like the kind i build is the fact that you've got this massive block of aluminium that is ridiculously hot um, you can pump more fluid in and get more smoke out uh, because it's such a big block of aluminium you can actually run this for an extended period of time you don't have to keep constantly heating it so yeah it's an interesting bit of kit but I think what I'm going to do now is put it back together and uh, see if it actually works because I've been told this heating element is, is broken. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it is or not. So let's see if we can get all, <laughs> get, get all this insulation back into the case.
power. So what we've got to do now is uh, again wait for the heating element to warm up. When it's warm that little light will turn green and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> so, let's see if this thing will work. Ready? Contact. <laughs> well, yeah, that works. <laughs> so, uh, I, I hope this has been of interest to you. It's certainly been of interest to me. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, yeah, as I say, I, I, I hope this has been of interest to you. It's, it's certainly been interesting to me. And um, thanks very much for watching, and I'll, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, bye.